So there are two types of heat transfer processes. There's the actual just transfer of heat from one object to another, and then there's the actual then there's the transfer of heat from in a chemical reaction by the breaking and forming of, of bonds and forming of chemicals. The first one we're going to talk about is the actual heat transfer of one object to another simply by an endo or exothermic process. In order to do this, we're going to use this formula here. Q equals MC delta T. Now, the Q is our heat. Okay? And our heat will either be in joules or kilojoules. And joules is just the unit of heat. It's, it's nothing special. We really don't need to know much more about that than it is the unit. Your M is the mass. And this is going to be in grams. Delta T is your change in temperature again. And C is what is called your specific heat. Okay? And your specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the sample of a sub the raise the temperature of a substance by one degree Celsius. Okay? And specific heat is specific to each and every substance. So and no two substances will have the same specific heat. It's actually we actually able to identify a substance based solely on its specific heat. So let's look at this example. It says 74.8 joules of heat is required to raise the temperature of 18.69 grams of silver from 10 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat? Well, like any mathematical problem, the first thing you should do is write your formula. Now, until you get good at this, write down what you know. It says it requires 74.8 joules. Well, that means our heat. It says the temperature of 18.69 grams. So that's my mass. And the temperature goes from 10 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. So temperature is always T final minus T initial. In other words, temperature final minus temperature initial, which in this case, our final temperature is 27 degrees Celsius minus our initial temperature, which is 10 degrees Celsius, which is a change of 17 degrees Celsius. Sign is important. This thing gained heat, and I can see that by the temperature going up. So this is an endothermic process. Very important. We'll talk about this continuously. So it says, what is the specific heat? Plug in what you know. 74.8 equals 18.69 times C times 17. Multiply your 18.69 times your 17 and divide both sides by the variables. So I'm going to pull out my handy dandy calculator. And I'm going to say um, 74.8 divided by parentheses are your friend. 18.69 times 17, enter, is 0.235. Now, the units on C are a little bit funky. Think about it. It was the heat, joules, divided by the mass, grams, times the temperature change, which is degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's joules per gram degrees Celsius. And this is my answer. Notice it's a fairly small number. Metals in general have very small specific heats because it does not require a lot of heat to raise the temperature of a metal. Think about it. If you touch cold metal, it warms up in your hands. And your hand is not transferring that much heat across. So let's look at a different problem. Now it says, which requires more heat to warm from 22 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius? 50 grams of water or 100 grams of ethylene glycol? Specific heat of ethylene glycol is 2.39 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, there's two things going on here. I have to solve, because it asks for which requires more heat. So I have the heat of water and the heat of ethylene glycol. Plug into the formula what you know. I'm solving for heat. I know the mass of the water is 50 grams. And I know the change in temperature, it's from 22 degrees Celsius to 85. So the final is 85 minus the initial, which is 22. But notice I'm missing the specific heat here. OK, something you need to know. The specific heat for water 
is equal to 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Okay? Put this in your margin, circle it, put a big star next to it. You're going to come back to that a lot, so make sure that you can find it. Again, you do not need to memorize it, but you, if you know it, it makes doing the problems that much easier. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 4.184 into my numbers. Do the same thing for the ethylene glycol. My mass is 100 grams. My specific heat is 2.39. And my change in temperature is the exact same, 85 minus 22. Okay. Whip out the calculator. So I have 50 times 4.184 times 85 minus 22 is 1317.9.6 joules and then for the ethylene glycol I'm going to do the same thing 100 I'm going to plug in my new numbers times 2.39 times 85 minus 22, close my parentheses, 15057, 15057 joules. Now, I did not answer the question yet. The question says, which requires more? So, ethylene glycol requires more heat. Now, I do this kind of thing a lot, where I make you do a whole bunch of calculations, but then the question asks you to answer, uh, the question is based on the calculations, but it's not the answer of the calculations. So my calculations proved me correct. Ethylene glycol requires more heat. Bam, there's the answer.